Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode here on Eat Sleep Brief. And this week I'm gonna be giving you guys a quick update on the Moto Aquarium 50 gallon you guys are seeing here right in front of you. Uh, to start off with obviously the very obvious and something we have already resolved. That is the algae issue. You can see absolutely no algae whatsoever. Look at that, none. Uh, coralline, I'm noticing it's really starting to encrust now. Uh, now that the algaes are kind of out, I'm really starting to see uh, the rock trying to get that purplish pinkish shimmer as well as a lot of uh, encrusting coming on now that the algae, you can really see it here, uh, now that the algae is kind of not there. So for you guys that uh, did miss that, I highly urge you guys to check my algae issues. I can almost guarantee that's gonna solve any algae issues you may be having in your tank. As far as the stock list goes, it's been doing really good, guys. Uh, the fish I've added, they've been here for, what, a good month now. Uh, they've been doing really well, uh, so I really can't, can't be complaining. I haven't added any more corals. Uh, the first, well, one of the two reasons being we're dealing with the algae issue. The last thing you want to do is be adding more stuff to the tank because if you need to you know, do something crazy, it's a lot easier to maintain it uh, with less corals. Number two, and probably one of the biggest reasons, if I'm being totally honest with you, uh, I'm going to be moving this tank very soon. Uh, it's not going to, we're not going to be here where we're currently at. We're going to be moving. Uh, so the last thing I want to do is obviously putting corals into more stress than they have to be in. On really good news, this chalice here has really, really grown a lot, guys. I mean, ever since I got, when I first got it, it had three eyes. Now it has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 eyes I can see. Uh, and this wasn't really that long ago. I would say, what, three, four months ago, I got that from Cali Kid. As far as the equipment goes, there hasn't been a real change running the same lights, uh, same skimmer on the bottom. You can see it there skimming away. Uh, the fuge, that's one thing I actually do want to show you guys. Check this out. This fuge has gotten massive. The Kato that's been growing in here, look at that. You can't even see the bottom of this thing. Look at that. It's, I would say, a good, what, half the size of the compartment. So it's, it's quite big, it's actually massive if I do say so. Uh, one cool thing I've actually done, I've just kind of experimented, I've thrown two snails in there. They've actually been there in there since I put the Kato in here. So they've been there for four months. Uh, one cool thing that I didn't even know snails do, they'll actually climb on top of the Kato and they'll clean up any of the nuisance or any hair algae or any other type of algae that'll grow on the macro. It's actually really cool and uh, very nice to see them obviously trimming it and taking care of it. You can see this one here. One of the bigger topics I did want to cover in this video is going to be how I go about choosing a reef tank. So as you guys know, when I once I do move, I am going to have a lot bigger reef tank than obviously this one. Uh, we're probably going to be going anywhere from 130 to 180 gallons. And I'd like to walk you guys through my thought processes, what I look for, when choosing a brand new reef tank. More importantly, I'd love to get your guys' feedback. Uh, you know, kind of really chime in so we can have a conversation, see your guys' thoughts, what you guys recommend I should do. So let's get right to it. About two weeks ago, I posted on my Instagram, really wanted to get guys' feedback on a few tanks I was considering going with. One of them was a, a Red Sea line, and the other one was the Waterbox uh, line of aquariums. And I know a few guys may be asking why not go with uh, a moat aquarium versus these two manufacturers here. Well, uh, one reason and, and a pretty important reason is the home we're considering on, on purchasing, it, where the tank is going to go, it will not allow for a tank deeper than about 24 inches. Uh, the moat aquarium is, uh, I want to say, 30 inches plus overflow, I want to say, is 4 to 5 inches. Uh, so it's a good, you know, 35, uh, 36 inches you need of space from the very front of the tank to the very rear. And again, only because where we're thinking of putting the tank in the new home, it will not work at all. So if I could have it my way, I absolutely would want to go with that tank. Why? Because it's such a deep tank. Uh, but at the same time, I got to also make sure the wife's happy and she's happy where the tank's going, so obviously she allows me to keep it. So in that, 
it automatically brought me to two of the next popular brands out there being Red Sea and Waterbox. Now, both these brands, you know, they're both good brands. They both have their goods. They have their bads, um, their issues, and, and, and so forth. So I did post it out, and to be honest with you guys, I've seen a lot of Red Sea tanks out there, specifically in the last year, have a lot of issues with seams leaking, I mean, just really horrific stuff of, of people that I follow on Instagram. It was really sad to see those tanks. Literally, they wake up and it's pouring out water from the seams. So in being a homeowner, that's one of the last things you're going you're gonna to want in your home. Obviously, there's only a certain extent that insurance will cover. So that's for sure something I did not want happening. And again, I've seen, to if, you know, if I'm totally honest with you guys, I've seen a few water box uh, with issues at the beginning, but it looks like they've addressed the issues and a lot of guys that own them are having great success with them. So when it comes to the Red Sea stuff, obviously they offer quite a bit of equipment now. They pretty much have a whole ecosystem set up. They have power heads, they have, I don't know if their doser actually ever came out, but of course they got salt, they got elements, they got lights, they got skimmers. I mean, they're really trying to attack this and make it a full ecosystem, uh, you know, not only for newer reefers, but also for experienced reefers that, you know, just want something different. In the reef tanks they offer, they have quite a few different models. I want to say it's this one. The Deluxe offers uh, the lights. So when it comes to these bad boys, these are kind of the, the dimensions they do have. They have the Nano, the 170, the 250, the 3, actually, I thought they had a few more. Oh, here they are, the XLs. So these were the sizes I was considering. I was either considering the 425 or the 525 um, only because I have the space, uh, the space lengthwise for you know either of these. Now one thing that, that wasn't too cool is the front to back spacing on these I think are 22 inches. Um, so they're not too deep, uh, but again, they try to give you more right to left than you know front to back. And again, these these tanks from what I've seen, they're pretty good. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't care much for the sump setups. After having a, a Kato uh, compartment, a specific one, I really like what the Kato's done to my reef tank. It, as far as nutrients, it absolutely takes care of them all by itself. I've loved the fact on the Moto Aquarium that I don't have to worry ever about a filter sock, a filter, anything. No filter floss. The Kato is all my filtration as far as mechanical is concerned. And you guys saw earlier, that thing is really, really good. So I've had great success and I probably want to replicate it. Now, a few people out there were recommending for me to try a scrubber, a clear water scrubber. I mean, there's a few other manufacturers out there. And it's something I'm considering. That's honestly one of the uh, first things I like to look at in a tank. Whenever you are choosing a tank, the first things you want to consider, are obviously the dimensions, not only the dimensions for your liking, but like me, the dimensions are going to fit in the location that you want to put it. One thing I'm not a big fan of, and <clears throat> you know, if you do do this, I'm not trying to talk bad about you, but I really don't like the look of of people when they go in their house and literally the tank. You can it's literally like an elephant in the room. It doesn't even go with the whole layout of the home. It doesn't. It's like a huge piece of furniture just sitting there. Um, it doesn't match, and that's honestly not something I'm looking to do. Uh, one thing I do want to do. And what I'm a big fan of is, you know, the aquarium being part of the home, both the colors, uh, you know, everything. I just, I want you to walk into the home and look at the tank and just adding a little bonus, you know, to everything else you're looking at. Again, that's just my personal opinion. That's how I like to, I like my tanks to play a part in my home. Uh, but again, you guys all have your ways and there's nothing wrong with it. There's no good or, or wrong way of doing it. At the end of the day, as long as you're happy, that's really all that matters. So again, the dimensions are a few things we look at. One thing, again, I don't like about the Red Sea is the front to back is only about, here you can see, 22.6. Yeah, they're not very deep. Uh, they allow for decent aquascapes, but not very deep. And again, I do have a little bit more room I can push front to back. As far as the, the sump, they're not bad. Uh, they're very basic, you know, don't expect anything crazy. After having a custom sump, I may just go, whatever tank I go with, I'll probably do the custom sump route only because I've done it and I love it and I love the look of it. Uh, so probably something I will consider. So that's one of the two important factors you want to do. You also want to consider plumbing, how the plumbing runs through the tank. Um, if it's coming through the back of the tank, if it's in an overflow box, 
Um, and while we're on that topic, also overflow box. If you have the space to run external overflow, obviously that's the best, my mode aquarium, that's one thing I really like about it. But in my next build, it's something that it's gonna take away from the overall you know, size of the tank. I'd honestly, in my next build, I'd rather it be inside because I only have a limited amount of space I can work with. So I'd rather have as much of that space be for tank, corals, and fish. And as far as the Red Sea stuff, that's really all I would consider. I honestly don't, I'm not trying to say their lights are bad or skimmers are bad or anything else. Just I personally, it's not something I would go with. Um, I've never tried them, so I can't really say they're bad. But again, it's just not my liking. So I wouldn't go with their lighting system. I wouldn't go with their wave makers. And I wouldn't go with, uh, with their skimmers. The next company I was considering was Waterbox. Waterbox has actually come a pretty long way in the past, what, year and a half that I've really started seeing them out there. And the salt water, oh, here we are. The tank I was considering with them, oh man, these peninsulas are beautiful, is a Reef Pro, I think, includes the lights, so just Reef doesn't include the lights. I'm really considering their 130.4. It sucks when I choose the image or when I choose this, it doesn't actually change the picture of the tank. Um, but it's cool. So I'd be going with it in white. And again, that sucks it doesn't change that. But anyways, I'm a visual guy. So if it changed, I'd be really sold. And it'd be a lot easier for me to, to press the add to cart button. But again, uh, it's, it's not a big deal. So this tank... I really like, again, the sump. It's very straightforward, very much like the Red Sea. It's uh, one of the cooler things I notice on this one is the plumbing. The plumbing is nicer. The stand is nicer. I want to say this is uh, plywood versus, I think, I don't know if the newer ones are still MDF or if they upgraded them to plywood. I'll be honest with you guys. The Moto Aquarium has really spoiled me with a, a aluminum uh, stand. I really love that so easy to clean so easy to maintain it's nice how I can work on the whole sump by removing everything so um, that's one one thing I really like but yeah on um, this one as far as the plumbing goes I'd have to say they don't really show the sumps do they oh yeah they do yeah I'm not I'm no, not a big fan of that looks pretty awful I hate the four filter socks in this thing the more filter socks guess what means the more maintenance I think this bad boy only has two, Red Sea has four. Yeah, I'd probably rip them out of both of them immediately and not even run one. Uh, but the layout, I actually like their sump layout a little bit better. I like how the chambers, uh, the, the, the individual compartments before it gets back to the tank, I really like it. Uh, the plumbing is nicer. I think on the Red Sea they now do dual overflows. I think before they used to do one or I don't know if they always had, yeah, I think one right there. But I think they changed it to dual overflow. Waterbox has been doing dual overflows, you can see here. So, so far, I like their stand better, I like their sump better, and I like their plumbing better. Now, going to the dimensions is here, you can see. Automatically, I love this. Look, that's 24 inches versus the Red Sea. Uh, the Red Sea's uh, 22, you can see it was somewhere right here. Where was it? Oh, here it is, 22.6 uh, front to back. So that already... I love that already about this tank right here. All of them, you can see they're all 24 front to back. The only thing that changes on them really, they're all 58 inches tall, is just the right to left. So 24 inches, 36 inches, and 48 inches. So all this is still within the specs. Uh, I can fit the tank in that new property, and I won't have any issues with it. So before I share with you guys what a lot of the comments on my Instagram post we're leaning to is uh well how about this i'll give you guys take a few seconds comment down below what brand you would recommend just out of what i've mentioned right now uh, would you go with red is red sea or water box i'll give you guys a free uh, a few seconds to comment below a few moments later now that you've done that i'll be happy to share with you guys a result so as far as my instagram post at least 80, it was, I think it was about 80% of people were recommending Waterbox uh, because a lot of things, a lot of people were saying the dimensions were better, the stand is better, the way you can adjust the stand is better, the sump is better, um, the front to back, the dual overflow, the glass is a little bit clearer, people were saying. As far as my Instagram post, a lot of people were recommending the Waterbox versus the Red Sea. Again, I understand Red Sea had 
quite a bit of issues last year with tanks popping. I probably, you know, fear a lot of people away, but I'm almost positive, you know, a company this big, they probably address those issues, but it really sucks for the people that went through it. Waterbox, I did hear of some issues on certain models at the beginning. I think it was only the Peninsulas that were having issues. Uh, but again, a big company like that, they're, they're probably, uh, they fixed it already. I actually know a few people running them uh, without any issues. So could you say I've made up my mind? Not yet. You know, there's still a lot of variables. I still need to decide if I am going with the custom uh, sump. If I am going with the custom sump, I need to make sure it fits, obviously, in the stand. That's another thing. I need to make sure I'm going to go with the stand because I may want an aluminum stand. I, I still don't know. There's still a lot of unknown. There's still a lot of things. But these are just a few things I highly consider when choosing a reef tank. They're very important things you want to look for. You know, does it have Euro bracing? Is the Euro bracing affecting the view of the tank? You know, there's just so many variables you've got to really be paying attention to. And these are just some that I like to go over when I'm choosing my reef tank. So guys, I hope it wasn't too much of a ranting video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. This is just kind of my methods, my ways of choosing a reef tank. Of course, we all have our own ways. No ways better, no ways worse. At the end of the day, it's what works for you and what makes you happy. But I'd really love to hear guys down below. I love reading your guys' comments and I'd love to hear, based on what we've covered today, based on what we talked about, what tank would you personally go with? Starting with brand, what brand would you go with first, either Red Sea or Waterbox? And number two, what size? For the Waterbox, I don't have many other options. It's only a 130. They don't make uh, anything bigger. I think their bigger ones are, I think they're in the Peninsulas. I think the Peninsula ones is where they offer the big one. Yeah, well, that doesn't say how many gallons that is. Um, seven, yeah, 72. Yeah, so the peninsulas and 25 inches. That's actually, these are actually really nice. But again, I'd love to do a peninsula, guys, but peninsulas, you really have to have the perfect home layout to really add, you know, be a room divider of some sort. Um, I mean, I don't know. There is a, I've never considered this, but there is a possibility I may be able to fit one. But, as far as just regular tank, the 130 seems to be the biggest that Waterbox makes. And then Red Sea has a 525, which is a 100, 140 gallons. I think, is that total water volume? I want to say that's total. I think on both of these, it's total water volume. But I, I'd have to confirm if, if that's with... Uh, with sump or without sump. But in either case, guys, I'd love to hear down below... Uh, you know what brand you guys would go with first again what size there's not many size so it's either the 525 or the 130.4 and yeah let me know what you guys think I'd love to hear it love to read about it if you guys aren't subscribed hopefully I earned your subscription be sure to hit that subscribe button if you guys like the video please be sure to give me a thumbs up it really helps me out keeps me motivated to push out more videos more content for all you guys out there I hope you guys are staying safe families are healthy everything's doing good through this pandemic that we're very closely nearing the end stay safe guys stay happy keep those reef tanks really spotless uh, i know each and every one of us is probably spending more time than we're used to on these tanks you know get caught up with your water changes get caught up with anything you need to do on your reef tank during this time i thank each and every one of you very much for watching today as always happy reefing